This is Mansudan Rao, from, uh, working as a professor of Computer Science and Engineering, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. So, this is the first lecture in the sequence of uh, many lectures on the course Computer Networks. So, these lectures are specifically made for the students of Institute of Aeronautical Engineering particularly fifth semester students as a part of the course. So these lectures are made as per the syllabus prepared for the fourth semester students on the course computer networks. So this is the first lecture. In this first lecture, I will am focusing on the two important topics related to the computer networks. They are types of networks and the reference models related to the computer networks. Before going to the details regarding the computer networks, first we define the meaning of the computer network. So the computer network it is defined as set of autonomous computers connected by communication lines. So set of autonomous computers, these are also called as computer nodes. And these computer nodes, they are interconnected by using the communication lines. So the computer network, it is mathematically defined as G equal to V comma E. It is a graph model where V represents the set of vertices and E represents the set of edges. So edges are nothing but the communication lines or communication links and uh, vertices are nothing but the computer nodes which act uh, autonomously. So a computer network it can be modeled as a graph which is represented as G equal to V comma E. Two computers connected to the network can communicate through other nodes if they are not directly connected. That means Two computers, they may not be directly communicated with, connected with each other for the communication. The two nodes, the sender and the receiver, they may be far away from each other. They can communicate with each other via intermediate nodes. So many computer nodes act as intermediate nodes and they support the transmission between sender and the receiver. Some of the nodes in computer network may not be a computer, they may in, can, they may be connect, can considered as the interconnecting devices. So there are so many interconnecting devices in the computer networks uh, such as switches and routers. So these interconnecting devices, they interconnect the different nodes and support the transmission or the communication between sender and the resources. Two computers are said to be interconnected if they are able to exchange the information. So the main objective or the purpose of the computer network is the sharing of the information or sharing of the resources. The resources may be hardware resources, the resources may be software resources. So the main objective is the resource sharing information can also be considered as an important resource. The connection need not be via copper wire, fiber optics, infrared and communication satellites can also be used. So these uh, nodes, they interconnected with uh, wired links and also wireless uh, links. In case of wired links, the communication link may be copper wire the communication link may be fiber optic, the communication link may be coaxial cable or in case of wireless communication, the space or the atmosphere can act as the channel for the information transmission. So before going into the details of the computer network, we just review the historical events happened in the history. So in 1948, uh, first commercial uh, computer Univac was uh, developed and designed. 
in 1959 first us communication satellite was uh, launched so in 1965 the idea of computer communication was uh, introduced so leonard kleen rock in his uh, queuing model he defined the computer network where the nodes are autonomous nodes are the computers and the links are uh, telecommunication links so he proposed that particular idea in uh, 1965 in 1969 defense of uh, us department of De De defense of U us they proposed first uh, network uh, the name of the network is uh, arpa network uh, advanced research project agency net so this network was proposed by that uh, us uh, dod so this network uh, it used the packet switching uh, mechanisms uh, for their uh, operations instead of uh, circuit switching mechanisms the telecommunication lines uh, at that time they used the circuit switching mechanisms for the voice uh, transmission but here in case of computer communications uh, the data has to be transmitted so for the implementation of uh, data the, for the transmission of the data instead of using the circuit switching mechanisms this particular arponet uh, it used the packet switching mechanisms in 1971 four bit 200 2300 transistors chip was made and that chip is used as a computer chip to perform the operations of the computer arithmetic logical operations and other controlling operations including memory related and io related operations in 1972 ethernet specification was uh, formulated and it, which was uh, standardized by the ieee in 1981 ibm introduced ibm pc in 1983 tcp ip becomes the official protocol on arpa net so before 1983 uh, tcp was introduced and also ip introduced these two protocols were used for the computer communications uh, but in 1983 uh, this tcp ip protocol the, the architecture was uh, became the official architecture for the arponet communications the computer network it can be viewed as a system any computer network it can be viewed as a computer sorry, in a system so any system it uh, it takes the input and process the input and produces the output so during this uh, process it may change the states and conduct uh, different uh, events so computer network also take the input information as the input and uh, process that particular input that information transmit that uh, information from one place to another place and uh, it is generates the output and hours that information to the uh, destination so during this particular uh, process uh, the computer network uh, it may change the states and and it performs uh, different uh, events therefore we can consider the computer network as a system any system behavior must be predictable and uh, reliable therefore the computer network we consider it as a system the behavior of the computer network also be predictable and also be reliable all systems are model and then simulated and their performance is evaluated before going to the physical system therefore computer network can also be model can also be simulated and we can evaluate the performance of the uh, simulated computer network and then we can deploy that particular computer network if you satisfy with the performance of the system performance of the computer network so a computer network it can be it can be viewed as a system and the system behavior can be applicable to the computer network also
Now we enter into this particular topic types of uh, computer networks. Based on several uh, parameters, the computers can be computer networks can be classified into different categories. So based on the architecture, the computer networks can be divided into two categories, client server architecture and peer-to-peer -peer architecture. So in case of client server architecture, the server is the centralized controller and the client machines, these machines are connected to the server through the network. So any client, if it wants to perform certain operation, it has to send a request to the server and this server it has to respond to the uh, request. So it reply, it sends the reply to the client, then only the client can perform the operation. So in case of client server model, all operations are under control of the server and uh, every time the server grants the permission to the client and the client also it has to request for the operation. After granting the permission, then only the client can perform the operation. So another model for this particular uh, uh, one is peer-to-peer -peer model. So in case of peer-to-peer -peer model, there is no question of uh, centralized controller. All systems they can be considered as the peers and uh, these peers they can perform the operations independently without depending on any other computer. All, all they can communicate on their will. So this mechanism it can be represented, can be viewed as a distributed mechanism. So based on the architecture, the computer networks they can be divided into Two types. First one is centralized, that is client server mechanism. Second one is decentralized or distributed, that is called as peer to peer computer networks. Next, based on the geographic span, the computer networks are classified into personal area networks, local area networks, metropolitan area networks, wide area networks, and then internet. So geographical uh, span, which is nothing but the interprocessor distance. So based on interprocessor distance, the computer networks are classified into many. If the interprocessor distance is uh, one meter, then that uh, computer network is called as a personal area network. If the interprocessor distance is, if it is 10 meters or 100 meters, or one kilometers. That means the geographical distribution is room or building or within a campus. Then that particular com network, computer network, is called as a local area network. If the interprocessor distance is ten kilometers, that is, if it is expanded up to a city, then it is called as a metropolitan area network. If the interprocessor distance is 100 kilometers or 1000 kilometers which spans a country or a continent then it is called as a wide area networks. If the interprocessor distance is more than 1000 kilometers say 10,000 kilometers and its geographical distance it spans the entire globe or the planet then it is called as the internet. So based on the interprocessor distance the computer networks are classified into personal area networks, local area networks, metropolitan area networks, wide area networks and the internet. Based on the transmission technology, the computer networks, they are classified into three categories. Three. But here I mentioned only two broadcast networks and point to point to networks. But there is another category, that category is multicast networks. So in case of broadcast networks, it is mathematically modeled as one to many. Sorry, one to all. It is not many. It is one to all. So in case of broadcast networks, 
all the nodes they share the common channel the message transmitted by one particular node it can be reached to all the nodes which are sharing that particular channel but uh, only one node to which the information is intended that node it can open that particular information and it can read that uh, information so here the model is uh, one to all model one node it is transmitting the information all nodes which are connected to that particular node through a shared channel they can receive that particular information but uh, only one node to which that particular information is intended it can uh, receives that information or it can read that information another uh, category of uh, networks is point to point networks so in this case the channel is not shared the two nodes are connected via directed links or through any defined channel and the data travels from the sender to the receiver through the intermediate nodes so by using multiple hop mechanism the information reaches the destination so in this case the sender is single sender and the receiver is a single receiver so this can be considered as one to one model one to one model there is another category that is called as one to many so this is this type of networks are called as multi casting networks so in this case the information is transmitted by the single source and uh, the information will will reach not all nodes but some of the nodes to some some nodes so in the second figure green colored nodes they they can receive the information transmitted by the source which is marked as red so this red node it transmit the information only green colored nodes they receive the nodes receive the information the remaining nodes they are unable to read the information they are unable to receive the information so this this type of model is called as one to many model and these type of networks are called as multi casting networks so the first figure it represents one to all the red colored signal say red colored node it is transmitting the information and uh, the green color nodes all nodes they are connected to the red colored node they are sharing the channel all the nodes they receive the information so this is one to all model and this one is the one to my one to many model and the third figure it represents point to point mechanism so sender and the receiver they are connected by a link therefore the sender transmits the information to the destination and destination receives the information this is called as one to one but uh, many to many all to all this type of model is not yet realized so far and the next one is based on the function based on the function the computer networks they can be classified as data networks voice networks and uh, multimedia networks so in case of uh, data networks the data is transmitted from source to the destination in case of voice networks audio signals are transmitted from source to the destination in case of multimedia networks uh, the multimedia information that is combination of uh, audio video uh, text it can be transmitted from one place to another place or source to the destination so based on the function the computer networks are divided into three categories data networks voice networks and multimedia networks based on the switching mechanisms the computer networks are classified into three circuit switched networks packet switched networks and message switched networks so in case of circuit switched mechanisms the telecommunication 
lines for the transmission of uh, audio signals they used this uh, circuit switching uh, mechanisms so a clear cut circuit is established between source and the destination sender and the receiver caller and kali through that uh, circuit the information which is in the form of voice is transmitted from source to the destination or caller to the kali in case of telecommunications so in case of computer networks also the same mechanism is used so the data or the information is transmitted through already established circuit between sender and the receiver if the computer network uses the circuit switching mechanism then that network is called as a circuit switched networks but in case of computer communications there is another category which we call it as the packet switched networks instead of establishing a clear cut circuit between the sender and the receiver the information can be divided into set of packets and these packets are travel from source to the destination through different nodes and this type of mechanism is called as packet switching mechanism and the network is called as packet switched networks in case of message switching networks it uses the message switching mechanisms so the entire information is converted into the form of messages and these messages are transmitted from source to the destination so based on the switching the computer networks they can be divided into three categories circuit switching networks packet switching networks and message switching networks but broad classification is circuit switching versus packet switching mechanisms only another category is based on the connectivity so based on the connectivity the networks are divided into wired networks and wireless networks in case of wired networks the communication link it is a wired link so open wire system coaxial cable system or uh, optical fiber system are used to interconnect the computers but in case of wireless networks there is no physical connectivity between uh, two computer nodes the air or the atmosphere of the space is used at the communication channel the computer network we defined it as a g equal to v comma e where v represents the set of vertices and e represents the set of edges so edges are nothing but communication links and v it is defined as set of computer nodes so the computer network it consists of set of computer nodes and also set of communication links so this setup it is used for the transmission of information from source to the destination or it is used for the resource sharing so to perform this particular operation or to meet this objective the computer network it must have the network hardware and also it must have network software if you want to discuss about the computer network we need to discuss about the network hardware and also network software so the network hardware it includes modems modem is nothing but modulator and demodulator and this modem is is responsible for the modulation operation and the demodulation operation so at the source end it performs the modulation operation and at the destination it performs the demodulation operation the network hardware also includes repeaters and amplifiers so the purpose is to amplify the signal to improve the signal strength so the information is converted into the form of electromagnetic signal and this electromagnetic signal has to travel from source to the destination while traveling through the communication link due to several reasons 
द इलेक्ट्रो मैग्नेटिक सिग्नल में डिके एंड डाई आफ्टर सम टाइम एंड मे नॉट रीच द डेस्टिनेशन सो टू अवॉइड दिस पर्टिकुलर प्रॉब्लम द रिपीटर्स एंड एम्पलीफायर्स आर यूज्ड टू इंप्रूव द सिग्नल स्ट्रेंथ हब्स bridges routers routers and gateways are also called as uh, interconnecting devices so bridges they work in the mac layer or data link layer it is an interconnecting device router works at the network layer it is also a interconnecting device which performs store and uh, forward operation gateway works at the transport layer level and it is also called as interconnecting device a combination of bridge and router it can be considered as the router so all these are considered as the interconnecting devices to perform the operations or to control all the uh, control all this uh, hardware we require uh, software so that software it supports the operations of this uh, interconnecting devices including the computer nodes network software it is organized in a, in the set of layers in order to reduce the complexity the uh, the software which is designed for the computer communication it has to perform several uh, operations so implementing these uh, operations uh, in a single layer or in in a particular software is difficult so which creates the complexity so to avoid the complexity the network software it is divided into set of layers and each layer it has to perform certain operations of the defined operations so a computer network now we can view it as a set of network hardware and network software the network software it is represented by using two models these two models are called as the osi reference model and the second one is the tcp ip reference model so in 1985 this uh, uh, zimmerman he proposed this uh, osi reference model so this model was uh, proposed by international uh, standards organization and the name of osi uh, that uh, abbreviation is open system interconnection model so iso's osi reference model it is one model another model is uh, tcp ip model tcp is one protocol ip is another protocol so if a network uses these two protocols for the data transmission or the communication then that uh, network is called as tcp ip network now we focus on uh, osi reference model and after completion of this osi reference model then we will go for the tcp ip reference model so in case of osi reference model the entire network software it is divided into seven layers the entire network software it is divided into seven layers each layer has a specific function to perform each layer offers services to its upper layer so here if you observe the network software the functions are divided into layers layer 1 to layer 5 so in case of osi reference model each layer it has to perform specific function and also every layer it has to provide some services to its upper layer layer 1 it has to provide service to layer 2 layer 2 it has to perform its own operation defined operation and at the same time it provides services to its upper layer that is uh, layer 3 layer 3 again performs defined operation and provides services to layer 4 similarly layer 4 it provides services to layer 
So these services, they can be accessed through a service access point, SAP. So every layer provides services to its upper layer through the service access point. In case of OSI reference model, the seven layers, each layer has its own function and each layer provides some services to its upper layer. So these services are implemented through the interfaces. Therefore, OSI reference model, it is constructed, it is designed based on three important concepts, layers, protocols and interfaces. Protocols are nothing but it is an agreement between the communicating parties on how communication is processed. So the communication, to implement the communication between the sender and the receiver, the computer network follows certain protocol. So this protocol is necessary to data transfer at one particular layer. Physical layer of source machine, it uses certain protocol to transfer or to interact with the physical layer of the destination machine. So the OSI reference model, it is designed around these three concepts, layers, interfaces and protocols. The communicating parties are the layers, these, these can be considered as the peers. So the source user on the source machine and the user on the destination machine, these two they can be considered as the peers. These two peers, they communicate with each other using the protocols. This is the OSI reference model. This is called as black diagram of the OSI reference model. So OSI reference model, it consists of seven layers. So this part, it represents host A, which is acting as a source or the sender, sender's machine. So sender machine, on the sender machine, the network software, it is divided into seven layers. At the same time, host B, it represents the receiver. So on the receiving machine, on the receiving machine, the network software, it is divided into seven layers. The bottommost layer is called as physical layer. Next layer is data link layer. Third layer is network layer. Fourth layer is called as transport layer. Fifth layer is session layer. Sixth layer is called as presentation layer. And the seventh layer is called as application layer. The physical layer, it is responsible for the raw bit transmission. And uh, it is responsible for the modulation and demodulation operation, encoding and decoding operations, multiplexing and demultiplexing operations. So the data or the information generated by the source, it is processed by or the physical layer. So this physical layer, it deals with the robots, perform these three operations, multiplexing operation, demultiplexing operation, encoding and decoding, and then modulation and demodulation. So it, this physical layer, it is connected to the physical link. The physical layer, it provides some services to the data link layer. The data link layer, it is responsible for two important two operations. One is error control and the other one is flow control. So during a transmission through the channel, the channel is generally considered as the noise flow channel. So because of the noise, some errors may be introduced into the data or the information. So that error can be detected, that error can be corrected. So that error control operation is performed by the data link layer of source machine or the destination machine. Similar, similarly, the nodes on the computer networks, they may be heterogeneous nodes. Some machines uh, can be considered as the fast machines. Some machines, they can be considered as the slow machines. Generally, fast sender, it pumps the data very fastly onto the channel. 
but the slow receiver it receives the data very slowly so this mismatch it may leads to uncontrol of the flow network flow so that uh, the uncontrolled flow must be controlled that flow control operation is also implemented by the data link layer network layer it is responsible for routing of the information of the packets and uh, it is responsible for congestion control operations routing and congestion control are the important functions of the network layer physical layer data link layer and uh, network layer these three layers are called as bottom layers and these three layers are also called as subnet layers so the the source machines network layer it interacts with the intermediate nodes network layer intermediate node network layer it interacts with another intermediate node network layer and the intermediate node network layer interact with the destination network layer so this part it represents the subnet layers so the subnet which consists of set of intermediate nodes they also have to execute the operations related to the physical layer data link layer and the network layer so a protocol is executed between physical layer of the source machine or central machine with the physical layer of intermediate to node so that protocol is called as a physical layer host router protocol similarly the data link layer of sender machine it interacts with the data link layer of the intermediate node through a protocol that protocol is called as data link layer host router protocol network layer of sender machine interact with the network layer of the intermediate node of the subnet node so through the protocol the protocol is network layer host router protocol transport layer session layer and the presentation layer application layer these four layers are called as upper layers and these are also called as end to end layer so they uh, generally they will not communicate with the subnet so above subnet they communicate to, with each other source machine communicate with the destination machine transport layer of the sender machine interact with the receiving transport layer of the receiver's machine so this interaction it is implemented by using the transport to protocol similarly session layer of the destination machine and the source machine they interact with each other through session layer protocol or session protocol the presentation layer of source machine the presentation layer of the destination machine they interact with a protocol that protocol is called as presentation protocol application protocol it connects the source application and destination application so the purpose of the transport layer there are the functions performed by the transport layer are connection establishment maintenance and termination in addition to this operation it also performs buffering operation multiplexing operation congestion control operations and flow control operations all these operations are implemented at the network level particularly end to end so the main objective or the function of the transport layer is to establish the connection and to maintain the connection and to terminate the connection session layer is responsible for the establishment of the sessions between the sender and the receiver by using different mechanisms it establishes the sessions and allow the information to travel from source to the destination in the form of sessions presentation layer it is responsible for the syntaxes and the semantics of the presentation and application layer it accommodates several applications and supports different applications any user he can develop his own application and those applications are implemented in this particular application layer so while communicating these uh, these layers they use 
the data units. In case of physical layer, the data unit is called as a bit. In case of data link layer, set of bits they can be considered as the frames. Frame is the data unit. Packet is the data unit in case of network layer. In case of transport layer, it is called as TPDU, transport protocol data unit. In case of session layer, the data unit is called as SPDU, session protocol data unit, transport protocol data unit. Here it is a presentation protocol data unit. So it is in, in, in presentation layer. So in case of application layer, the data unit is called as a application protocol data unit. So here this OSI reference model, it is designed on the concept related to layers. So seven layers, each layer provides some services to its upper layer through the interfaces and uh, the pro using protocols, these layers, the peers on the layers, they communicate with uh, each other. So this is about uh, OSI reference model. So another one is the TCP IP reference model. So in case of TCP IP reference model, the number of layers are four. Host to network layer, this is bottommost layer. Next layer is called as internet layer. Third layer is con considered as transport layer. And the fourth layer is application layer. So here in TCP IP, no presentation and session layers. So transport layer, it provides services to application layer. The operations of data link layer and physical layer, they are implemented in host to network layer. So OSI reference model is seven layer model and TCP IP is four layer model. IP internet protocol is the main protocol in case of internet layer in TCP IP reference model. TCP transmission control protocol it is the main model, main protocol in TCP IP reference model. So there are several differences between the OSI reference model and the TCP IP reference model. The first difference is the OSI reference model it consists of seven layers and the TCP IP reference model it consists of four layers. Second difference is in case of OSI reference model, first the architecture is designed. First the architecture is designed and then protocols were identified for each layer. But in case of TCP IP, protocols were identified first around the protocols the architecture was developed. This is the second difference. The internet, it initially it used the TCP IP architecture. So the internet, initial internet, it can be considered as the TCP IP network. So that internet is implemented using two protocols only, transmission control protocol and IP internet protocol. So, uh, there are several reasons why uh, the TCP became popular, even though uh, even though we developed this, we introduced this OSI reference model. So, with this, uh, uh, I conclude this particular uh, uh, lesson one, and uh, in the second lesson, we focus on the physical layer of the OSI reference model. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.